As some of you may know, I serve on the faculty of St. John's Seminary in Brighton. And the seminary building stands just a stone's throw away from the course of the famed Boston Marathon. We're just a little ways from Commonwealth Avenue. And we're very close to the hardest, most infamous stretch of that very difficult race, a hill known as Heartbreak Hill. The marathon course throughout the whole year is filled with runners who are inspired by the prestige and aura of the race. And every once in a while, I too get the running bug and dust off my running shoes and go for a little run. I'm probably better classified as a jogger because I think you have to run at a certain speed to be classified as a runner, and I don't think I break that speed. Anyway, part of my little course stretches through a piece of Heartbreak Hill. And I can tell you from personal experience that hill is very well named. <laughs> it seems to go on forever and it's really demoralizing and crushing. And as I said, I'm a very weak runner. And towards the middle of the hill, I am often tempted to give up. When that temptation strikes me, I often look around. And if there are no other runners in sight, if no one's around, I very often give in to the temptation and throw in the towel and walk my way up the hill. If, however, there are other runners around, if there are people watching, I usually summon enough self-respect and pride to keep going, desiring not to look pathetic. I go so slow, I probably still look pathetic, but I hold my head high as I jog up the hill. Having an audience, having people watch you, often makes all the difference between keep, keeping going and stopping. And today, we receive the very good news from the second reading of our lectionary from the letter to the Hebrews, that in the race of Christian life, we have an audience. And not just a neutral audience, we have fans, onlookers, watching over us and cheering us on. If you've ever run a marathon or know someone who has, you know or they know that the crowd is a major force in the experience of running. Their cheering, their encouragement can give you that little extra something to keep going, to plod on ahead, not to give up. We have this advantage in our Christian life. We have a cloud of witnesses watching over us, cheering us on. That cloud of witnesses is, of course, the saints, the saints who have lived the Christian life before us, who have endured sufferings and difficulties just like ours, but who have persevered in their fidelity to Jesus and desire us to persevere as well. This is extra good news because Jesus in our gospel makes it very clear that the Christian race, the Christian life is a hard one, a very hard one. It's filled with sufferings. It's filled with disappointments. It's filled at times with the sorrow of division a division that can cut through our very own families. Rather shockingly, Jesus tells us that he has not come to bring peace to the world, but rather division. This may scandalize us, this may confuse us, but Jesus is getting at a very important truth. 
Jesus has not come into the world to maintain our paper-thin, superficial peace. Jesus has come into the world to transform us. And transforming us involves going deep into the depths of our hearts. It involves revealing perhaps unspoken, unacknowledged divisions and resentments in our lives. And bringing all of that to light is extremely painful. Going from a false peace to a deep peace involves the revelation of division, the confrontation of our divisions, of the ways we've hurt others and others have hurt us. And that, as you know very well, is hard. It's difficult. It's, at times, heartbreaking. And when we experience that heartbreak, we can be tempted to give up. We can be tempted to go back to the false peace in which we lived and balk from Jesus' invitation to go deeper. In those moments, we can be tempted to give up the serious practice of the Catholic life. We can think to ourselves, it would be just so much easier to be like everyone else, not to take Christianity too seriously and to fade into mediocrity. But Jesus did not come into our lives for that. He calls us higher, he calls us deeper. He calls us to run an arduous race, one that will break our heart. But while he calls us to these things, he equips us with amazing gifts. Jesus himself has run the race that we are running for us, before us. And we do not run it alone, nor do we run it on our own strength. We run it with his strength. We run it with the encouragement of that cloud of witnesses, invisible to the human eye, but accessible through the gift of faith. They are cheering you on. Jesus is running at your side. He calls us to persevere. Running the race to the end is worth it because at the end there is a deeper peace, a deeper joy than we can possibly imagine. So when you're tempted to give up, if you're tempted to give up today, this gospel, these scriptures are for you. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus Keep your eyes fixed on the prize of that deeper peace, that deeper transformation for which Jesus died for you, for which Jesus ran the race he calls you to join in. May we never give up. May we always persevere with his strength and his love as our own.